unable to do this earlier in the week, so we're going live today. So I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes and we'll just go with it. Uh, but I just wanted to share a few minutes with you today. This is probably going to be a shorter video for Sunday morning than we usually have. And uh, just, uh, but I wanted to still get on and touch base. We're really trying to do these videos again. Uh, I know we've gotten away from them, but we really like to do that. And hopefully we get to a point soon where we can just live stream our services. But we do want to uh, get on here and just uh, share with you. We will be sharing this also on uh, Facebook and possibly Instagram later. And uh, so also uh, these will always go on our website. So you will always be able to go to our website and uh, see these videos. So I uh, just wanted to uh, come to you today. First of all, already took too long uh saying some preliminary stuff because we find that most of you just stay on for probably about 10 seconds or so maybe 20 seconds uh and, and then the views uh you know kind of drop off uh but some people are starting to stay longer which is good so let me just give you what i'm going to do first is just give you my whole sermon uh in a nutshell and and go through go through it real quick uh we're on the tail end of mark chapter one and, uh, and after we uh, go through it real quick, I will come back for those that want to stay on and, um, and just share. But let me just give you my points. And I actually got five points this morning. And um, we're in Mark chapter 1, 16 through 45. And uh, I want to talk about the servant's ministry. The servant is Jesus. And so here are my first five points. The servant ministry is shared. That means people share the ministry together. Uh, the servant's ministry is liberating. Uh, here we talk about Jesus uh, delivering a demoniac. Um, and uh, so servant ministry is liberating. Servant ministry is communal. It's shared. It's not just one person doing all the ministry. Ser ser servant ministry is evangelistic. Jesus had a desire to evangelize everyone, and so not just sit and build a church and build a following. Uh, servant ministry is compassionate. Jesus touched a leper and set him free. So uh, for those of you who feel like now, okay, I got the whole... Uh, I got the whole sermon, and uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, you could drop off right now. Otherwise, for those of you who want to stay on, I'm going to go and dig a little deeper into these and uh, spend maybe the next 15 minutes or so just sharing uh, what this means. We're going through the book of Mark, and um, we decided to do that this year for three reasons. And let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, one, uh, I really feel that Jesus is... Uh, is real and people are trying to create their own Jesus. And so Mark, like, unlike any other gospel, is just the raw Jesus. This is who he is. Uh, just kind of like throw him up there. Uh, the, the second reason is um, that we are entering into a political year. And so uh, everyone's going to be fighting over who their king's going to be. And so what I'm interested in, in is what does the king look like. Uh, the third reason, and I think um, one of the most important reasons is for our church, we want to be a, um, a uh, I'm sorry, uh, we want to be, we want this to be a year of action for us. So the question is, what are the actions that God has called us to do? Uh, so that's why we're going through the book of Mark. And today I just want to talk about servant ministry. What does servant ministry look like? Um, and, and so, um, uh, servant ministry first is shared. Um, Jesus said, follow me, follow me, Jesus told them, and I will make you fish for men. This is verse 17 of chapter one. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee and his brother, John in a boat, putting their nets in order. Immediately he called to them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So, uh, servant ministry is shared. What I love about this is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he doesn't just say, hey, I'm here to come and preach and do this ministry. And you guys, my thing looks weird. You guys, uh, you know, you can watch me. Uh, do this. What Jesus said uh, first and foremost to people is, hey, I'm going to share this ministry with you. You're going to learn to do what I do. You're going to fish for men. 
Uh, we know the story uh, if, if the, it goes deeper in the book of Luke, where um, Jesus tells them to throw their nets on the other side of the boat after they've been fishing all night. If you know anything about fishing, you know, the fish are at the top of the water. If you're fishing with nets, they didn't have like long reels that they wheel fish in. And so they would put the nets in the water and at nighttime, the fish would be up higher and you would catch it. This was morning. It was getting hot. And Jesus said, hey, one more time, just throw your net over the side of the boat. They did. They got this big catch. They saw this miracle of Jesus. And uh, that's the context that Jesus says here in Mark. Um, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus did this miracle. Uh, again, every miracle Jesus does says something about Jesus. He's saying to them, yeah, I can help you with your fishing, but what I really want you to do is fish for men. And that was the mission of Jesus, to fish for people, to uh, to put out the net and bring people in, to gather people to God. And what's so beautiful is Jesus shares this ministry with other people, with you and me. What a, what a great, great, um, just uh, wonderful grace of God that he help, he calls us to share in the ministry with him. Uh, when we are called to work for God, that is not God saying, get the, get, get, start working for me. This is God's grace and mercy saying, hey, I got this great plan for humanity. And here's the thing. I want you to be a part of it. I want you to see how I can set people free. And I want to use you to do it. God could just do it. And he could say, hey, I'm just going to build my church and I'm going to call people in and you guys could watch. But that's not the heart of Jesus. The heart of Jesus is to share ministry. Uh, secondly, uh, servant ministry is liberating. Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent." Now, this is a person who's demon possessed and the demon is talking to Jesus. Uh, and the unclean spirit threw him into convulsions, shouted in a loud voice and came out of him. And they were all amazed. And so they began to ask each other, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits to obey him. At once, the news about him spread throughout the entire vicinity of Galilee. So um, I love this. What is authority? What does authority look like? Authority looks like someone who is going to come and liberate you and set you free. Not, not someone who is going to just get their way. Uh, that's not authority. Jesus had compassionate authority, and and where did he use his authority? He used it on demons that were set that were um, uh, controlling people's lives that were. Um, uh, can, that, that, that were uh, bringing death and destruction into their lives, and he was liberating them. He was setting them free. Do you know, as you look in the Bible, the first person in the entire Bible to cast out a demon is Jesus. We don't see this in the Old Testament at all. And uh, so when, when Jesus spoke in the synagogue here, uh, the scripture says that, uh, Mark says that the people were wowed because he was talking as one with authority. Uh, ancient teachers would say, well, Rabbi so-and-so says this, Rabbi so-and-so says that, uh, and that's how they would teach. But Jesus came in and he taught with authority because it was his words. He's the word of God. Uh, and he said, he was basically saying, uh, no, it's not what rabbi so-and-so says. It's what I say. I'm the authority. And, and how did he back that authority up? He cast out demons right in front of them. And, uh, and so, uh, I love that the demon wanted to say, Hey, you're the son of God. And Jesus was saying, no, I'm not going to accept the endorsement from a demon. Right. And, and I think those of us that are um, weaker leaders than Jesus uh, would be tempted to say, hey, yeah, you know, tell everyone about that. Tell them who I am. Uh, Jesus wouldn't accept that from them. And, and uh, there's lots of reasons for that. Once Jesus, once word got out that Jesus was the son of God, uh, he wasn't able to go anywhere. We're going to see this in the book of Mark. We're going to see this in this chapter that he's not able to go anywhere and do anything because people are talking about him. And, uh, and the thing is, his heart is for people and he wants to get the more people and he wants to share the message. He doesn't want to get stuck uh, with, with a certain group of people that just want to control him. And, and make him their personal Messiah. He wants to spread the, the word because uh, servant ministry is liberating. Servant ministry is communal. Um, so uh, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went into Simon and Andrew's house with James and John. 
Simon's mother-in-law was lying in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. So he went into her, I'm sorry, so he went to her, took her by the hand and raised her up. The fever left her and she began to serve them. When evening came after the sun had set, they were brought to him and all those who were sick and demon possessed and the whole town was assembled at the door and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. So, wow, there's so much here, but I, I just want to share this, this little uh, thing here that is just so amazing. Uh, uh, Jesus goes into the home to heal um, uh, Peter's mother. And uh, so he heals her and then she gets up and she begins to serve. Now we can make a funny joke about that, right? <laughs> like, okay, here's your, go make us dinner, right? But that's, that's not really, you know, the heart of this. What the heart of this is this. This is what Jesus does for us. He comes into our lives. He heals us. And then we get up and we serve because ministry, servant ministry is communal. It's done in community. And we see this in this whole story that uh, they're at the house and the whole house is there. So as people are coming, uh, what are Jesus' disciples probably doing? They're serving people. They're finding, helping them find places to sit. They're, they're, they're giving them food. They're giving them something to drink. They're, they're ministering to together why Jesus is casting out demons and setting people free. We're going to see later on in the book of Mark that he shares this power with people and says, hey, I want you to go out and cast out demons. I want you to go out and heal the sick. I don't just want you to serve at the house, right? I want you to do all the things that I'm doing. Um, and so What's what really strikes me here, though, is the ministry of Jesus is done in a community right now. You might be watching me and you might be saying, well, I really, really like this online stuff. It's really great because I could just sit on my couch and uh, in my robe, my bathrobe and my slippers and and uh, and I can, you know, watch different churches and stuff. There's nothing bad about that. But here's the thing you're missing out uh, because uh, community is harder. It is. Uh, if you're going to join a church, you're going to get tired sometimes. You're going to get frustrated with it uh, because you're going to be really dealing with people. On TV, you don't have to do that. On the Internet, you don't have to do that. But in a church, you have to do that. And that's on purpose. God wants us to be in ministry with other people and working through stuff because scripture says that iron sharpens iron. So, so as iron sharpens iron, the scripture says one man sharpens another. Uh, and so when we are together, working together, sometimes it's great and it's perfect. And we say, I love my church so much. It's so wonderful. All the people are great. And then other times it's frustrating. It's hard. And that's the point because uh, God uses people to mold us into the image of Christ. And he allows us to share in ministry together. And that's a blessing. It really is. And so look at the church as not, not as something you have to do, something you have to be a part of, something that frustrates you, but look at the church for what it is. It's a blessing. Even when there's people around that you may not understand, or you don't understand why they're doing what they're doing, it's a blessing to have them. And so it's a blessing for us to be together and share in ministry together. Um, and so let me move on to my next point. Servant ministry is evangelistic. Servant ministry is evangelistic. And he said, when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And listen to what Jesus says. And he said to them, let's go on to the neighboring village so that I may preach there too. This is why I have come. So um, here's what happened. Uh, Jesus at this point in his ministry is getting really popular. Mark is going through this really, really fast, right? There, there was some build up to this we see in the other gospels, but Mark keeps using the word immediately. You're going to see this over and over again in the book of Mark, that this is a fast paced book. And Mark is saying immediately Jesus did that. And immediately Jesus did that. Um, this immediately Jesus did that. And that's because Mark wants to build a sense of urgency that, that, that uh, this, this gospel, this ministry that we have is really, really important. And there is an urgency to share the gospel with people. And here's this story. Uh, in this part of the story, he did all this healing in the home 
uh, and and people were really excited watching people get demon possessed, watching people get healed. And uh, Jesus uh, was fully God, fully human. And in his humanness, he got tired, right? And But he also, this is so important, he had to spend time with his father. So he got up early in the morning because it was probably the only time people would leave him alone. So he get up, gets up early in the morning while it's still dark. He finds a place to pray. And here's what happened. His disciples go looking for him. And what did they say? Hey, do you know everyone's looking for you? Here's what the disciples want to do. Let's go back to the house again and do all the stuff we did yesterday because that was cool. And everyone's getting healed and everything, you know, and that, that that church service we had in the in the house was awesome. And Jesus said, OK, it's time to move on. It's time to go on. It's time to share the gospel with other people. Uh, think about what would change in our lives, what would change in our churches if we just kept saying we got to share the good news with people. We got to get out. We got to go to the next person. We got to share the good news with people. When, when I was in sales, this is going to sound, it, hopefully it doesn't sound mean. It's not supposed to. But what would happen is like you would have leads and I would talk to my sales manager and I said, I'm working on all these leads and I've been calling them. And at some point he would say to me, if these people aren't responding, it's time to move on. It's time to just move on to the next person. And um, and, and so that's what I had to do. Right. And um, so it's one thing to say, hey, I got a brother, I got a sister, I've been sharing the gospel with them forever and I'm really working on them. You should not stop doing that, right? But at the same time, we got to have a heart for people where we say, you know what, there's a point where we move on to the next person and and not stop sharing the gospel with the original person, but the, the stop maybe getting into arguments and getting into things, and I'm going to keep trying, we're going to keep working on this one person, this one person, and when there's thousands of people that need the gospel. Even in our area in Cape May, uh, there's a lot of churches. I thank God for them. I thank God for each and every church in this area. But if every church was full, there would still be thousands of people that are not attending church at all. There's plenty of room. And so we need to keep sharing the gospel and that needs to be our heart. For some of that, for some of us, that's easy. For some of us, it's not, right? So for those that have a hard time sharing the gospel, we need to support those who are sharing the gospel, but we still need to find a way to share the gospel ourselves. Even if we're not doing it perfectly, we need to share the gospel. Um, ministry, uh, servant ministry is evangelistic because it cares about people. I'll, this is the last thing I'll say on this. It's so easy for us to say, I want to be around people that I'm comfortable with. See, and that's what community is for. That's why ministry is shared in a community. Uh, but we also need to share the gospel with people that are not like us, right? Um, and and one of the mistakes I made early in ministry, I don't know how I did this or why I was just so moved with this idea of evangelism that when I was a teenager, I started going to the mall and just sharing the gospel with people myself. And um, on one hand, that was great. But on the other hand, no, it wasn't because um, you don't see that in the Bible. You see people uh, going out in twos and threes, you know, going and sharing the gospel as a team. Um, and so that's what Jesus is saying. You're my team and we got to go to the next place. We got to share the gospel. Um, and so uh, and the last thing is um, uh, servant ministry is compassionate. Um, oh, I didn't show you the slide. I told you there'd be mistakes. So <laughs> let me show you the slide. Uh, servant ministry is compassionate. Um, it says he went into all of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. And then a man with leprosy came to him on his knees and begged him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing, he told him, be made clean. So this is the, the last point uh, for this sermon. I usually have three points. Today I have five. Um, <laughs> so um, this is such an amazing story. And each one of these stories could be a sermon in itself. Um, lepers in the Bible were people with a skin disease. Of course, you know probably what leprosy is. Um, and it was in the uh, Old Testament scripture in the Torah that a person with a skin disease would be unclean. 
right? So what the what that meant was they were outside of the community. And if you came close to them, they would have to cover their faces and they would have to shout, unclean, unclean. You were not to touch them because if you touched them, you would be unclean yourself. And you would have to go through a whole bunch of rituals to be cleansed to go into uh, the temple and worship again. Now, in Jesus' day, they took this cleanliness to a crazy, crazy level. Um, and what they didn't realize is that there was a <clears throat> a spiritual statement about this, and that was to come into the presence of God, you have to be clean, right? So, so we need our hearts clean to come into the presence of God. But they got really stuck on the cleanliness. So no one would ever touch a leper. Not only would you be unclean, but you could catch that contagious disease. No one would do that. So no rabbi, no teacher certainly would ever touch a leper. And here, this man says this beautiful prayer, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Now that's a prayer of faith. A lot of people don't believe it is. A lot of people say, well, what are you saying if God's willing? Of course he's willing. Um, but the second part of that is where the faith comes in. He says, if you're willing to do this, you can make me clean. You're able to do it. And um, and I think it's perfectly appropriate to say, Lord, if it's your will, um, you can heal me. I, let me just say this as a word about healing. Um, a lot of people approach healing as it, really like the pagans approach healing. And that is, if I say the right words and I do the right things, then I get my healing, right? So people will say, oh, don't say you're sick, right? Because that's not the right word to say. Don't say, God, you can heal me if it's your will, because that's not the word to say, right? And if you say the wrong word, then you're not going to get healed. That's not what happened here. This guy said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And what did Jesus say? So beautiful. I am willing. But then he didn't just say, he could have just said, you're healed. He touched him. When he touched him, uh, there probably was a gasp in the air. No one could believe that Jesus could touch a man and, and that was like this because he would be unclean. But here's the, here's the thing. When I, you or I touch a leper, we're unclean, right? His uncleanness makes us unclean. But when Jesus touches a leper, the leper is made clean. And that's what happened. And of course, he's told, go and, and do all the sacrifices that you have to to show the priest that you've been healed. He may have been the first person in history to actually follow that law. The first person to be healed of leprosy. Uh, it was almost as if God made this law for this moment. When you're healed of leprosy, you're supposed to go, present yourself to the priest, be inspected, offer sacrifices, and then you're invited back into the community. And so Jesus didn't just... Um, heal this man of leprosy, he brought him back into the community of worshipers because that's what servant ministry is. Servant ministry is compassionate. Uh, so uh, let me wrap up with some things here, and I appreciate you uh, staying on and, uh, and, and going through this whole thing. Let me give you some final thoughts. Uh, God has a ministry for you to share in. You have a ministry. Uh, so you say, well, that ministry is not really for me. I don't really, I don't have any talents. I don't have any, anything that I can offer. Ministry as you, uh, God has ministry for you to share in. And can I say this, that ministry is a blessing. So if you're like, hey, they really want me to do this thing at church. I don't know. Um, it's a blessing for you to do that. It's a blessing to be asked. So say yes. And if it's the wrong thing for you, if it's something you don't really like, then say, this is the wrong thing for me. It's something I don't really like, but then do something else. Do the ministry that God has created you. If you are doing the ministry that God has created you to do, you will be fulfilled. If you don't do it, you will never be fulfilled. So if you want to be fulfilled in God, um, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to give you the ministry that he has given you. Uh, uh, second thought. Um, he sent you, he sent one to liberate you. This is our Lord. This is our Savior. This is what he does. He liberates us. Think of the heart of Jesus. So ultimately, he came to liberate, to, uh, to liberate us, to set us free. And um, how does he do that? He goes and takes on our sin. He goes to the cross. He lays down his life for us so that we can be set free. Isn't he wonderful? Uh, isn't our God awesome and wonderful? Um, 
the gospel is powerful enough to share. Um, I read a lot of articles about how Christianity in America is declining, and uh, in some ways it is. In some ways, it's just people being more honest. And, and, and there was a time when everyone kind of had to say they were a Christian, but they weren't. Uh, and here's the thing. When you hear that, you you may say, well, yeah, I'm kind of nervous about sharing the gospel because, um, you know, there's not as many people going to church as there used to be. I, I think we got to get out of that mentality. The gospel is powerful. The gospel is good news. And it's powerful enough to share. Once we share the gospel, it's the Holy Spirit that takes over the work, the Holy Spirit that works on people. And I've seen the Holy Spirit work on people that were really, really difficult people to talk to about this sort of thing. And the Holy Spirit works on them. We don't have to try to shove it down people's throats. We don't have to try to force them. We just have to share. We just have to share what Jesus has done in our lives. You know, that's so much more important than so many other things that we're doing right now. Uh, we need to be people who share the gospel. And the, and the gospel gospel is powerful enough. We don't have to try to make it powerful. Um, and, and finally, there is no person beyond his reach. And so I would say don't give up on anybody. Pray for them. Uh, allow God to use you to speak to them. And excuse me, I got a niche on my ear. Uh, don't be afraid uh, to share. Uh, there is no one out of God's reach. And, and when they won't listen to us, we can pray for them. And so let's just uh, let's just pray now. Father, in Jesus' name, we just come to you. We ask you to just move powerfully. Lord, give us the heart of servant leaders, not the heart of those that want their way. And we give you thanks and praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless you today. I hope some of you get on and watch the whole thing. Uh, and for those that just saw the first part, I hope that ministers to you. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.